rejoicing in my saving God. Looks upon me in my state, and all the world will call me blessed. For God works marvels in my sight, and, and holy, holy is God's name.
Branch of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene Adnanit Avila and Family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and Family. of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Adilio and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene Adnanit Avila and Family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and Family. Today is the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Although our calendar tells us today being the 16th of July, it's a memorial or feast of the Our Lady of Mount Carmel. But it is just an optional for a chapel like this who is not a titular. But still, the Blessed Virgin Mary is always with us as our dear mother and constantly protecting us. And so in this Eucharistic celebration, together with our personal intentions and the intentions entrusted to us, we offer this Mass also for those who are commemorating their birthdays or anniversaries today, and for all those who are practically uh, having difficulties in trying to bear fruit for the glory of God and for His vineyard and His, and his uh, field. And also we pray constantly for the needs of all those who tirelessly support the apostolate of CCTN through prayer intentions, love offerings, sponsorships, and reassuring goodwill. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to you to the right path give all for the faith they profess our accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor to our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth making it fertile and fruitful giving seeds to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats so shall my word be go that goes forth from my mouth my my word shall not return to me void but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i 
false on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest the seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest you have visited the watered it greatly have you enriched it God's water courses are filled you have prepared the grave Have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, 
we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him, and he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. That is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand, you shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of his people, they will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty, or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. A blessed Sunday to us. Actually, I purposely opted uh, to read the longer form 
because this is one of the few if not two or three parables in the gospels these are very significant because they are being interpreted already but it doesn't mean that the, the parable is already interpreted and i'm free of my task but there is a very interesting thing here that we have to take a look into because it is in the very challenge that every now and then or every day of our lives the challenge continues to be practically attentive no to try to be attentive to the message that god has for us in our daily lives there are so many different aspects of this message and whenever we are able to catch uh, a glimpse of it or really absorb it you know, it brings us down sometimes it makes us anxious you know, sometimes it also makes us excited or eager but then whatever is the effect of such a message or a challenge has always something to do with how we continuously strive to live our Christian lives that is the reason why to make the seed fruitful okay so it's already very clear no there are seeds that fell on all these things now there is one interesting commentary i read as a student that these kinds of soil where the seeds fell on rocky ground on so on the uh, on the uh, grassy plain no or in the rich soil actually belongs to just one particular person it belongs to us because there are moments that when we listen sometimes we we get so excited about it that's why we're so attentive sometimes we say ah well, or not no so we are actually described with three these different kinds of soil but there is always a place in our hearts in our lives that remain to be always constant and constantly rich but the reason is how is the message ever reaching that place but anyway we are always called to be to bear fruit but it is not a case of saying ay 60 raman ako ang fruit ya iya halagi 100 mas daghan ang iya dutay lang ako no don't worry because the category of 60 fold 30 fold or 100 fold has something to do with the capacity that each and everyone is given we do not have the same capacities but what is the challenge here is to bring it into fullness if we are given 60 then we have to bring up to have to bear 60 that's justice but then if we are given a hundred fold and then we can only give give 70 that's not enough we still can do something more in order to reach the the, the 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 limit but if we are given only 30 and we can give 75 well that's problematic that's where corruption comes in asam na gika ng 45 na 30 raman imong kaya no so these are the little things and the peripheral issues that actually uh, matter when it comes to understanding even more this very parable of the sower and the seed so we are all given the capacity to do it the most important thing is responding to the call and the message and the challenge we should give the ultimate in our lives now it's not something that we can do it right here and now no it's a constant process and it is just like being planted now what is so interesting here even more is the sense of excitement which the second reading today talks about the great expectation which is what hope is we christians we we baptize christians we are not complete without that sense of hope what does christian hope bring to us it is something that we look forward to if we do not ho have hope we are not christians sorry na lang kung dili ta malaumon sa atong kinabuhi walay pulos ang atong pagtuong kristohanon because with faith comes always the hope and this is the very beautiful thing about the hope because it allows us to even desire for more in as much as god has granted us to give to him to the full and not only to him but to share with our brothers and sisters as well and with this fullness and with this beautiful 
communion and sharing of gifts, we become God's bountiful harvest for the world and for other peoples to see and hopefully imitate and join us in this one chorus, in this one journey, in this synod, in this faith that we live. Because we call each other brothers and sisters, for indeed, we are God's children, and so we are. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, let us now pray to the Father that through His Son we may not just be listeners, but doers of the word. And so we pray, loving God, hear us. Loving God, hear us. That we may have recourse to your word in order to be trained in holiness and be equipped for every good work. We pray. Loving God, hear us. That those in public service may derive strength and inspiration from your word and follow his example in serving the people. We pray. Loving God, hear us. That those who are suffering from anxiety, those who are tempted by the values of the world, and those who grow cold in faith, may hold on to your word for courage and consolation. We pray. Loving God, hear us. May you welcome in your loving embrace and peace those who are dying today, and all the souls who are in need of most of your mercy. We pray. Loving God, hear us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Loving God, hear us. Let the word, Heavenly Father, sink deep and take root in our hearts so that we may know your will and follow the path you mark out for a fruitful and bountiful harvest through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
sisters and brothers that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands. For the grace of the Lord of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we are playing. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like their dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, with Midifil and Ruben, his assistant bishops, all bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus the Christ Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now share with each other the sign of peace. Shalom.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O oh my God, my only hope, I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we truly honor and love our Blessed Virgin Mary, and today being the memorial of the Our Lady of Mount Carmel, let us offer a hymn in order to put a particular Marian color in this celebration that we have today. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among we and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. 
death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Eucharist has been offered. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family, 